Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and the winner from the poll for today's video was, well, what is this nonsense about the Vienna Convention that the Brexiteers are coming up with now? So the situation with Theresa May's withdrawal agreement is that because the government couldn't get the backstop removed from the agreement, of course not, it's there to comply with legal obligations on the part of both the UK and an EU member state, she needs to convince all of her MPs and the DUP as well that the UK can unilaterally withdraw from the backstop. Naturally, it can't do that either, otherwise it wouldn't be a backstop. So the Attorney General, Geoffrey Cox, refused to play ball last week by saying that we could legally withdraw from it because he didn't fancy his chances lying to Parliament, didn't want to say that. But there are others who don't seem to have the same qualms. So what a group has done now is it's suggesting that Article 62 of the Vienna Convention um, can help out this. You know, and what this little known article deals with is it's to do with withdrawing from treaties. Uh, entered into in good faith, I guess, uh, where circumstances have changed as an excuse for doing so, except that the actual article they read up, they didn't read it very carefully, actually seems to do the opposite. But anyway, although the Attorney General won't lie to Parliament, it is being reported that he's been utilised to lie to the DUP in an attempt to get the deal through. That is speculation, of course, just because he's involved doesn't mean he's necessarily lying to anyone. However, to even suggest that this article would help in such a situation is to tell just as big a lie as those who've tried to claim that GATT Article 24 would allow us tra tariff-free trade with the EU after a no deal, or claiming that we'd have to adopt the euro in a year or two if we stay in the EU. And it's a lie being propagated to get MPs to vote for May's deal one last time, either in the belief that there's a legal way out of the backstop, or at the very least, to convince their constituents to believe it so that no blame would fall upon those MPs for voting the agreement through. Remember, the motivations of MPs throughout this process has largely been dictated by the need to avoid blame for the situation that is befalling us. So, the article in question, what does it say? So, very quickly, <clears throat> um, fundamental change of circumstances. One, a fundamental change of circumstances which has occurred with regard to those existing at the time of the conclusion of a treaty and which was not foreseen by those parties, may not be invoked as a ground for terminating or withdrawing from treaty unless a. the existence of those circumstances constituted an essential basis of the consent of the parties to be bound by the treaty. In other words, some circumstances would have to arise, changing circumstances that would be like, actually, if those circumstances had existed, we never would have voted for it in the first place. Or b. the effect of the change is to radically transform the extent of obligations still to be performed under the treaty. In other words, those changing circumstances make it impossible for the treaty to be what it originally was. Or two, a fundamental change of circumstances may not be invoked as a ground for terminating or withdrawing from a treaty for A, if the treaty establishes a boundary, or B, if the fundamental change is the result of a breach by the party invoking it, either of an obligation under the treaty or of any other international obligation owed to uh, any other party or to the treaty. Blah, 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 blah. So in other words, the operation of the treaty has to be fundamentally changed by the nature of those unexpected circumstances. Now, legal experts on the matter suggest that these unforeseen circumstances would basically have to include something like war or revolution. Now, the last thing the Conservatives want is revolution. And although I don't think they're all that bothered about war, even they wouldn't declare war on Europe to get out of this treaty. I think... Also need to bear in mind precedence with legal matters. So unlike with GATS 24, which has never been used in human history because it's useless, this article has been tested in the International Court of Justice. The claim then was that the dissolution of Czechoslovakia was grounds for the abandonment of a treaty between Hungary and what became Slovakia and the Czech Republic, though it was an issue with Slovakia that Hungary had an issue with. I mean, that's pretty extreme, isn't it? one of the signatories of the treaty in question split into two completely different nations. But that wasn't good enough reason for the courts to allow them to withdraw the treaty. So there is precedence for the bar to be raised incredibly high. And the very fact that people even talking about this article as a way of out of the withdrawal agreement, if it gets ratified that is, means that they are foreseeing events. So there's no way they could claim it was unexpected. Besides, we've just seen... It doesn't just hinge on it being unexpected results as such. There needs to be some very good reason why the treaty shouldn't apply. 
If the breakup of a nation isn't in itself a good enough reason, then what is? Another term that's crucial is exceptional circumstances. Well, a nation wanting to get out of a treaty because it doesn't like it, which essentially would be our argument, is hardly exceptional. In addition, legal experts suggest that the unexpected circumstances have to be such that the court would believe that the treaty never would have been signed if those circumstances had existed at the time. So what might constitute that? Well, I'm not an expert in international law, of course, but then nobody who is is saying that this is a realistic option to withdraw anyway. So the reunification of Ireland, uh, you could argue, might be grounds for saying that, because were it not for the Good Friday Agreement issue, uh, then we might not have had to sign up to something that had a backstop. In fact, we wouldn't have needed to. So you could argue that we wouldn't have signed up to that agreement had Ireland already been unified. However, that's not unexpected. Uh, it also wouldn't change the operation of the agreement. The independence of Scotland would be an even weaker argument because it had no bearing on the reasons for the agreement on those terms. Though it's pointless to even consider them because if I can imagine the circumstances that they are, by definition, not unexpected. And that's the point. If any MP can conceive of any reason at all to use this article to get out of the agreement in the future, by definition, the article will not allow them to do so. Besides, we don't need my uneducated view. Uh, senior British legal experts in international law at the weekend wrote a report dismissing the notion entirely. Not that it would really need it. This is another case of an article in international law that's actually quite short, very easy to understand. I don't see how you need to be legally trained to see that this article does nothing for the Brexiteer cause. In fact, if anything, what it actually lays out are the circumstances that, that, that won't work. You know, what it's actually doing is laying out the weaselly sort of excuses politicians might come up with and how they actually won't be accepted in the court of law. And when it comes to precedence, I described an example of where a nation has tried to use this article to get out of international obligations and failed. But are there any examples of its successful use? No, none whatsoever. No nation has ever been able to cancel a treaty using this article as justification for doing so. So that just seems to leave them with declaring war on Europe to get out of it, which, in the words of Sir, Amph Sir Humphrey Appleby, might just be overreacting a little bit. And another point in all this, if MPs vote for May's deal in the belief we have a legal mechanism for escaping, then that would be to suggest that the UK are entering into an international agreement in bad faith from the start. It's one thing when individual MPs play fast and loose with our international commitments. That sadly happens in all countries. But you expect the government itself to defend the country's honour. An MP is just pay, playing to their voting public. Uh, but a government has to also play to the international stage. And so are usually a bit more grown up about these things. Theresa May did this, for example, in stating quite clearly that a hard border in Ireland would be a breach of the Good Friday Agreement. She was very unequivocal about that, even when members of her own party were trying to cast doubt. It was one of the only honourable things she's actually done throughout this process. And I cannot overstate enough the importance of a nation's government making it very clear that when we sign up to something, we see it through. For her to potentially allow MPs, or even encourage MPs, worse still, to vote for an agreement that they believe will be breaking within a year or two is abhorrent. The impression this gives to the rest of the world about the UK's credibility in future international negotiations will hamper our capacity to do deals globally, not just with our immediate neighbours. It won't even matter if we actually try it or not. The very fact that we'd even hold it over the heads of our international partners would be worrying. It takes a lot of time and effort to build up a reputation, but it takes no effort or time to destroy it. And this one careless action in desperation to revive a dead deal, could destroy any hope of us ever being trusted in some time. So that is the next Brexiteer lie of how a legal argument actually is no legal argument at all, and the damage we could actually do to our international reputation if the government pursues this. But let me know what you think anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe for further content, and click the bell notification as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.